Tomorrow, October 7th, marks the one year since the horrific terrorist attacks on Israel by Hamas. So just one day ahead of the one year mark, let's go off the wall to take a look at everything that's happened so far and how the war continues to expand. So, Will, it all started, uh, unfolded on our show in, in almost real time, yep. uh, the horrors on October 7th. On that day, Hamas fired 3,000 rockets into Israel. 257 Israelis and four nationals were taken hostage by Hamas, Pete. And it's estimated that just under 1,200 people uh, were killed during the terrorist attacks. Think about that, about four times that injured. Uh, they, the, the deadliest attack was on, uh, on Jews since the Holocaust, but it was that music festival, uh, that was the Nova Music Festival, and then the kibbutzes, these small communities uh, in the south of Israel that knew they were close to Gaza, but never conceived of something like this. And that's why you saw a death toll so high. You mentioned it happened on Fox and Friends, essentially breaking news here. This is what it was like October 7th last year. An unprecedented and coordinated attack against Israel is taking place right now. This has been a constant scene along the Gaza border. We're hearing horrific stories of people just grabbing whatever weapon they had at home and trying to fight off the militants that were entering their communities. When you see the reports of these uh, terrorists going in and killing families and killing children, taking Israelis hostages. A woman said that she received a phone call from her niece, who's eight years old, and said she's hiding inside her kibbutz. They have killed wow. mommy and daddy. She's hiding wow. with her four-year-old brother underneath the bed. Iran seeks to destroy Israel and eliminate Israel, and we're seeing that play out in Israel right now. From today day on, things will never be in Israel as they were. Never be the same, and they certainly have not been ever since. Not in the past year, certainly. Um, here's the timeline of events that have taken place since October 7th. The attack, October 7th. October 8th, Israel declares war on Hamas. It gives you a sense, you know, uh, two or three weeks to mobilize the troops down to the south to start the ground invasion, which started with uh, a big air campaign. There were moments there early on where a pause for fighting for a few days allowed for some hostages to be returned. So there are 100 plus. A lot of that were uh, women and the elderly. Uh, it didn't include a lot of IDF soldiers, didn't include a lot of Americans. But there was a point early on where they thought, okay, maybe some of these exchanges would continue. And you'll remember then if we jump forward to April, Iran launches its first ever direct attack on Israel. The next day, Israel responded with airstrikes in Iran. Now, you know, there had been a lot, this, this is a short, small period of time on our graph, but that's five months where the war just sort of continued and the status of the ceasefire and the hostages was not well known. Then Iran puts his finger on the scale even more. And then in September, it really ramped up to the new phase. Uh, we had reports again on this show and across the network of, of pagers exploding across Lebanon in one of the best clandestine attacks we've seen in a very long time. And then walkie-talkies exploding walkie and then followed up by missile strikes. And those missile strikes in, in Lebanon resulted on September 28th in the confirmed death of Hassan Nasrallah, killed an Israeli airstrike, the leader of Hezbollah. Correct, uh, who'd been the leader for more than three decades. A lot of people believe because those devices were compromised, so were the locations of all the high-level leadership of, Leb of, of Hezbollah. And as a result, the in entirety of the Hezbollah leadership was decimated. Then Iran lobbied missiles in again, which kind of brings us to where we are right now. So here's the fallout in the United States. You saw campus protest across the country. Um, you, you became a big issue uh, in, in America last year during the school year. It spread over somewhat this year into the beginning of the school year as well. But it wasn't just schools. It was across the country, and big metropolitan areas. It wasn't just schools. It, was, it had an impact on the political process as well. Protests outside the White House um, ramped up also. So you saw, but you remember those big encampments we saw in certain places, UCLA being one of the most significant, which said they weren't going anyway. There were standoffs with administrators. There were testimony on Capitol Hill. You remember all the college presidents, yep. a couple of which were forced to resign, UPenn, Harvard, and Columbia. And what was exposed there is their unwillingness to call out the evil of the October 7th attacks and simply say, hey, Jewish students on campus shouldn't feel threatened because the images we're seeing behind us are images of intimidation. Uh, they happen and they continue. And so where are we now? Today, IDF, the IDF says 250 Hezbollah terrorists have been killed in southern Lebanon. That's in the most recent news. Um, and Benjamin Netanyahu is vowing retaliation for those October 1st strikes from Iran. Both sides have said if more happen, if, if another attack happens, there will be retaliation. Supreme, Supreme leader says more strikes, strikes are likely. The, Iran's foreign minister wants a ceasefire 
in both Lebanon and Gaza. Uh, hasn't happened thus far. Doesn't seem much more likely right now. 97 hostages remain, including seven American citizens. Uh, it, worth nope. noting there, uh, more than half are deemed to be alive, but many of the hostages at this point, intelligence tells the Israelis they probably are deceased. Yeah. All right, so what's next? Where We've laid out where we've been and where we are now, and, and what's next? Uh, there's the lay of the land. You can see this is Tuesday in Jerusalem. This is the, some of the missile strikes we talked about. Um, and you can see Israel surrounded by enemies, uh, but on the front foot, Pete. I mean, yeah, that's it right. to Lebanon I mean, and Iran. What's next? I mean, they're continuing offensive in Gaza. They continue an offensive in Lebanon. They're dealing with Houthi rebels, lobbing missiles as well. Uh, so as much as things have changed, a lot remains the same. The question, this country right here, Saudi Arabia, Will all of this Iranian agitation eventually push them back into a relationship with Israel? Some people contend that could be possible. But after this last year, I wouldn't bet uh, that we know what's going to happen next. Right.